What's going on everybody? Joe from NDB Aviation and it has been what some people would call a hot minute since I've made one of these state of the flight simulation videos. Now there's been a reason for that and actually there have been a couple of reasons. One, flight schedule since I became a captain. It's been pretty darn busy. All the regionals are pretty crunched for pilots right now and we are flying quite a bit. But aside from that, the big thing and big reason why I have not put out a whole new state of the flight simulation update video has really been because there have been a lot of updates that have focused mostly on scenery, aircraft, and just overall aesthetically pleasing updates for Microsoft Flight Sim 2020. And really we've reached pretty much the end run of X-Plane 11. And this video is not even going to talk about X-Plane 11. However, we will talk about X-Plane 12. So this video will cover the flight simulators of Microsoft Flight Sim 2020, X-Plane 12, sorry folks, no prepare 3D yet again, I don't know when I'll get around to it, but one of these days I will, sorry. And then we'll talk about PC parts, and then we will finish up with flight sim peripherals like joysticks, rudder pedals, yokes, throttle quadrants, all that kind of stuff, and some news from Honeycomb Aeronautical about some pre-orders starting June 1st for some long-awaited products. Now, these are only pre-orders, these are not ship dates, but if you're looking for those Charlie rudder pedals or the new Alpha Yoke, keep in tune, because, or I just kind of let the cat out of the bag. June 1st will be the pre-order date, so get those credit cards ready. Start saving your pennies and uh, dollar bills, y'all. Uh, so, let's jump in and let's talk about Microsoft Flight Sim 2020. Now, it's gone through a lot of updates. It's gone through a lot of visually appeasing, appealing updates with a lot of things that have added to the overall simulator and just made it more enjoyable. You know, if I'm going to jump into Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 or X-Plane 11 when I'm at home and say my kids want to go fly around somewhere and see parts of the world and I can show them something, you know what I'm going to choose. It's going to be Microsoft Flight Sim 2020. However, if I'm trying to teach something, Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 is still the way to go with my kids right now, but if I have somebody that's really interested in aviation, I'm going to kind of push Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 to the side and say, that's really nice, it looks great, but if you want me to teach you a few things, let's pull X-Plane 11 off the shelf and load that up and start running through a few things. So. This is where things start to get interesting to me at this point with all the updates, Sim Update 8, and now coming down the pipe is Sim Update 9. So the biggest things that were changes with Sim Update 8, visuals as well, we did get the new marketplace, we got some weather improvements so the weather would actually download a little bit faster and you weren't flying across country and then all of a sudden the weather stays the same from point A to point B and you just cross maybe 200 miles, 1000 miles or more. The weather should download a lot faster now, which should aid in making the simulator a more realistic experience, which I think that's huge. That's very important. But what's really important and really interesting to me is finally, finally, Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 is getting to the point where we have a true flight simulator. Now, let me talk about why. With Sim Update 8, we saw the new prop physics be introduced for three specific aircraft. The Cessna Warren 52, the Cessna Caravan 208, and the King Air from Textron, previously Beechcraft. Study some history of aviation, you'll find out all these companies were, before Textron took them all into Warren, they were separate companies competing against each other, but that's besides the point. With these new prop physics, we're finally getting things where propellers are going to work the way that, kind of, like they do in real life, which is pretty important because if you're somebody who flies in real life, if you're trying to actually match up sim flight dynamics with maybe the POH, the pilot operating handbook, and you're trying to make this all work the way that it should in real life in the simulator, now we're finally getting closer. We're inching closer to what an airplane's true overall performance should be like. With this prop system that's coming in, it's going to translate ultimately to, to, to the introduction of helicopters into the simulator, which is important because if you're going to bring in helicopters, the fact that those blades beat the air into submission is kind of important to get prop physics down right because every propeller blade is a lifting body in essence. It's producing lift, it's producing drag, all these other things that are very important with the way the aircraft flies. So prop physics are the big number one that I think that's starting to lead in to making Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 to me a great stepping stone and getting to the point now where I can use it for instructional purposes maybe in the future and hopefully see it used in a BATD or an AATD or other flight training devices where you can log time for a certificate or stay current to keep doing the things that you do with your certificate like an instrument flight rating for going into in and out of clouds. And then also around the world different, uh, different countries have different regulations for their 
basic flight training devices versus what the FAA does here in the United States. So it differs from country to country, but what I'm hoping to see is Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 is now taking that step from being a really nice flight simulator that's kind of more arcade-like, now becoming more of a flight sim for training purposes and down the line. But the next step in this evolution of Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 doesn't really come in until Sim Update 9 and further updates where we get computational fluid dynamics. Now, that's a rather large mouthful of words, computational fluid dynamics. I hope I said that right. I know I did. But why are these important? So air, I know moving my hand about it doesn't really look like much, but I think all of us have had at some point maybe washed our hands and then you feel the air coming out of a hand dryer in the bathroom somewhere. You know, you've washed your hands, put it down underneath the air dryer, you feel the air against your hand. Air is fluid in nature, therefore, tying in computational fluid dynamics for air in a flight simulator is very important to lead us down the road of actual realism that translates not just from these new prop dynamics, but actually creating prop wash that starts at the front of the airplane with the prop and then leads back across the airframe, creating lift on different surfaces of the aircraft. So you can create lift, not just from the wind, but from the prop as well, combining all that together on the rudder, say the Piper J3 Cub. This is in a video that Asobo made. I'm gonna link it down below that you can watch. It's a feature video where they talk about the prop dynamics and then all this computational fluid dynamics coming together to give us a true simulator. We'll finally have prop wash. We'll have the fact that now multiple surfaces of the aircraft are producing basic wingtip vortices. We're producing overall wash across, across the airframe that will create lift properly now. We'll be able to do secondary stalls, accelerated stalls, better so true to the air, true aircraft and you know basic physics that you would get if you went and you flew in real life. So I think with Sim Update 8, Sim Update 9, and then following updates that will further tweak these physics engines to make Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 a true flight simulator, I think Asobo is making the right step in the right direction to give us a true flight sim that in the future we will see utilized within approved, FAA approved flight simulator, flight training devices, BATDs, AATDs, FTDs, and eventually up the line to probably a class D or a level D sim that we use at the airlines for our training and certification standards because let's face it, as this program evolves and becomes better suited, runs faster, runs smoother and incorporates multiple aircraft and then other companies like L3 Technologies or CAE and other training outfits across the globe can then code for it even better, tie it in, replace old FSX based scenery and algorithms that are in a lot of the old level D sims and then incorporate Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 or maybe X-Plane 12, we will see better simulators and training devices moving on. With that said, that's really what I have for Microsoft Flight Sim 2020. I do have notes today to try to keep me on track and make this one shorter than previous ones so I don't rant too much. But I am very excited to see the future for Microsoft Flight Sim 2020. And I look forward to hopefully being a part of the rollout. Maybe I can apply, if I have time, for the beta access for Sim Update 9 to really test that out because I would love to be a part of that. And I'd love to see how that actually evolves and make it better. Um, we have quite a bit moving forward with Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 to be happy about, especially because we have a large system of aircraft add-on, scenery, and everything else that comes together into a really nice package to give us an enjoyable flight simulator moving forward. So that's it for Microsoft Flight Sim 2020. Let's talk about X-Plane 12. No longer X-Plane 11 because that product is pretty much done. They have finished with the majority of their updates and we're gonna see them move on now to putting all of their hard time, sweat, tears, and I'm sure many other frustrations into the development of X-Plane 12. At this point, they are finishing up the alpha test. If you go over to the X-Plane uh, dev blog, you'll see some posts over there and you'll be able to read through what they've been working on recently. We're gonna get a new lighting system, new overall physics and with better wing tip, wing tip vortices and overall basically some other equivalent similar to that of computational fluid dynamics that Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 is going to have eventually. X-Plane's been working on that. There's a previous post where Austin talked to a previous F4 Israeli instructor pilot and he details a lot of what they went through to fine tune the flight model and the overall physics in X-Plane 12 to make it better over X-Plane 11. Other things that are coming from the, with X-Plane 12 will be, like I said or, or already earlier, new lighting system, Night scenery will be in HDR, it sounds like, full-time. We'll have a new true anti-aliene uh, 
uh, rendering system. We will also have better water uh, dynamics in the sense that water should be truly 3D. And the list goes on and on. New aircraft, a bunch of new stuff coming. One of the other things I thought was interesting with their most recent update for March 4th was where they talked about trying to actually fine tune low visibility operations. Now, low vis operations are pretty much what they sound like. If you're not a, a true, if you're not a pilot in real life and you fly in the sim, there's a little bit of a difference in between going what you know I've done flying a approach down to minimums in real life or a takeoff right close to minimums where we need a takeoff alternate because you can't come back to the airport you're taking out of. That looks very different in the sim versus in real life. There are just some things that we can't perfectly reproduce in the actual simulator yet. We're getting really close and Austin's team at Laminar is getting really close to making it look like what I've seen in real life versus what I've seen previously in flight simulators. One of the things I thought was very interesting is they created a monolith, kind of like Arthur, Arthur C. Clarke's Space Odyssey, that I think is very interesting. I don't know if there's any homage there to the overall novels and the movies, but it was a cool t tool that they developed to actually judge scenery distant, distance and drawing for the overall visibility to fine tune how the overall visuals will look in X-Plane 12 versus X-Plane 11, and then fine tune the lighting system because you can have a dark day underneath the clouds and in the clouds, but above, of course, the sun shining. It's a clear day of somewhere above all of that uh, fog or all those clouds. All the rain, freezing drizzle, freezing fog, whatever it might be, there's sunshine somewhere above that. So it's very interesting to see this develop and see the overall alpha access and hopefully soon beta access to continue to evolve. Now, there are a couple things that are gonna be very interesting. They do have support for the m -Warn ARM chips or m -Warn chips from Mac as well that they're working on. There are a couple other things that they're trying to wrap up and kind of smooth and streamline from X-Plane 11 over into X-Plane 12. You can read about this on their dev blog and further further overall explanations because I don't want to mess this one up. I think if you're interested in X-Plane, you should go over there and read on their dev blog. I'll have the link down below. And even for Microsoft Flight Sim 2020, I'll, I'll have the, uh, the dev forums linked down below in the comments section or in the description section below. But one of the things that I do have some concern over is they have a lot of work ahead of them because Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 is a visually pleasing flight simulator experience that at times is very arcade-like. Whereas X-Plane 11, sure, it can become an arcade-like simulator depending on how you use, utilize it, but it is not visually appealing like Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 is. And I think what X-Plane has to do with their overall development for X-Plane 12 is they need to catch up on the visuals without leaving behind all their customization and ability to fully train to actual systems and actual aircraft like they had in the past. And they're even going more into depth. They've, they have previous videos and discussions about how hydraulics and hopefully pneumatic systems are all going to be even further developed for X-Plane 12 so you can actually program an actual aircraft to be similar to what it is in real life. The issue that I worry about is they're going to leave OpenAL behind, they're going to leave behind a few other tie-ins that they've previously had, however the alpha test that they're doing now is with third-party developers to then try to find out how to work in all these old systems that are not going to be part of X-Plane 12 and find a way to bridge the gap and bring them all in together. So I am very excited to see the fact that they are working with their developers, third-party developers especially, to make this and mitigate issues unlike X-Plane 10 to X-Plane 11. There were a lot of growing pains. So hopefully, fingers crossed, knock on wood, we can see that they can work out a majority of the third party issues before the actual launch of the retail version of X-Plane 12. The beta they said is coming and everybody will have access. So that will be really interesting to see. Uh, the other thing I do worry about with X-Plane and Laminar Research is the fact that Microsoft Flight Sim is back. They have, hardest, they have the hardest competition they have probably had in years. They competed with FSX in the past and several other defunct, gone by the wayside flight sims way, 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 way back when. Way back when. Further back than the door to this room that I'm in right now. But there was, there was at one point a lot of competition. And as FSX and the others kind of died off and we had FSX Steam Edition, you know, FSX just kind of kind of hobbled along, still looking good and still working overall, but X-Plane made inroads. They gathered more developers, more third-party developers that added to the library, and I think now we have that worry of potentially Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 is going to grab a majority of the attention and new simmers, and X-Plane is going to be left kind of stagnating potentially. But I hope with X-Plane 12, 
Laminar Research and Austin's team can continue to recruit new third-party developers, bridge the gap, and keep a library growing for X-Plane 12. And aside from growing the X-Plane 12 library and retaining the third-party de developers, I hope that Laminar Research can make this transition smoother and that majority of add-ons for X-Plane 11, hopefully, will actually transition to X-Plane 12. So that's it for X-Plane 12, Microsoft Flight Sim 2020, like I said, no prepare 3D. PC parts, uh, that's one thing I do want to talk about for a quick moment. We have new chips coming from AMD. We have new chips already out from Intel. The new Intel i5 chip is pretty solid. I think for bang for the buck, it's a great CPU to build a desktop around. We do have new RTX cards coming from, a from NVIDIA, and there will be new, um, I forgot how do we do it, the 6800 series, the 6900 series, whatever the AMD GPUs as well, there are updates coming on those. It seems like the AMD GPUs are going to be pretty much along the normal lines, but the NVIDIA chips and GPUs are going to be power hungry. You might need to update your power supply for your desktop if you are waiting for an RTX 4000 card. One of the other issues you might really want to consider is, will the increased requirement for power supply and wattage that I'm going to use on a regular basis justify the frame rates I'm asking out of it? So you might need to actually look at the full economic picture of upgrading to an RTX 4000 card versus just sticking with an RTX 3000 card until the RTX 5000 cards come along and hopefully can so maybe find a sweet spot for performance and power consumption. After that, PC parts, GPUs, it should be interesting to see the overall new RTX GPU mobile chips when they are developed and are released and we get numbers. But that's a lot to yet to be seen, and we have to wait on those. As far as PC peripherals for flight sims like Yoke's throttle quadrants and so on and so forth, it seems that the Thrustmaster Boeing supply parts are actually shipping. They're pretty much out there. They look cool. If I can get my hands on some to try them out, I will try them out. And then for Honeycomb Aeronautical, we have news that the pre-orders for the Alpha XPC and the Charlie rudder pedals will start June 1st. I do not have ship dates on those, but the pre-order dates for those peripherals will start June 1st. Honeycomb Aeronautical, Alpha XPC, and the Charlie rudder pedals June 1st. So keep an eye out for those. Do go check them out at Sun and Fun. I don't have any information on top of my head right now for where they will be, but I will make a Sun and Fun video here hopefully shortly before the show kicks off. So folks, if you liked, like and subscribe. Let me know any questions, comments you have below. And uh, see you guys again real soon, hopefully sooner than later, like my difference in time between this video and the previous one. Stay safe, stay healthy out there. Joe from NDB Aviation. Bye-bye.